The first thing we need to locate is the Jepson box in the back of the aircraft. Inside the box you'll find two items. One is a flash memory card and the other is a USB card reader. The USB card reader will be used to transfer the database from the computer to the flash memory card. Next we'll take the USB card reader and simply insert the cable into the USB port located on the side of the laptop. Next we'll open up the dust cover on the USB card reader and this is where we'll insert the memory card. And then carefully remove the SD card from the dust cover and notice there will be contacts on one side and the and the memory card is keyed. The contacts go towards the center of the card reader. Which simply insert the card with the contacts down. On the laptop then we'll open up the Jepson Services Update Manager and log in using our credentials. And once you're in there, you'll see that uh, it's showing a database update is available. Simply click on that and click Start. And then it asks where you want to store that. In our case, it's uh, Drive G, which is the USB card that we just stuck in there. You can click Continue. Uh, the update can take a few minutes. I've shortened this video um, to expedite that, but uh, it doesn't take very long. Once it's done, it shows you the cycle that has been uh, programmed onto the card and it says it's successful. You can simply click uh, OK at this point. At this point, we're done with this application. You can close the Jepson Update or Services Update Manager. Next, we will remove the USB card from the computer, but first we will click on the Safely Remove Hardware icon on the SysTray of the desktop. Select Drive G. This flushes any data not written to the card uh, to ensure everything's written correctly. At that point, remove the card and put it back into the protective uh, plastic uh, container. We can then remove the USB card reader from the laptop and we can simply coil that up and we are done with that for this task. We will not be needing that any further. Before doing anything in the aircraft, we want to make sure that all the power is off in the air aircraft so that the master avionics buses and standby battery buses are in the off position. Next, we'll insert the SD card into the MFD by inserting the contacts to the right, and it simply pushes in, spring-loaded, and it clicks into place. Once it's inserted, we will turn on the master, and then we'll be turning on only the avionics bus 2, which will power the MFD. When the MFD uh, initializes, it'll detect that SD card in the top slot, and it reads that card, and as you can see, it'll detect um, a navigation database update, gives you the effective dates and the cycle that it's looking at. And it, it'll be prompting in the lower right-hand corner whether you want to update the database or not. We'll be selecting yes in this case. After selecting yes, the data will be copied off the SD card. When this is complete, the MFD will reboot and it also runs a checksum on the files to make sure that they're not corrupted. This is where um, using the safely remove hardware on the Windows or on the laptop is important to ensure that the data was flushed to the SD card without any half-written data.
The first chance that we'll get to verify that the new navigation database has been loaded is at the splash screen of the MFD where you can see the databases listed and their expiration dates. You can also view the database dates um, on the auxiliary page in the system status. You will see the cycle, the effective date, and the expiration date for the navigation database. Now that the navigation database is updated, we shut off the avionics bus 2, which powers off the MFD, and turn off the master. Next, we will insert the SD card into the PFD in the same manner we did the MFD. Next, we'll power on the master and avionics bus 1. This will power on the PFD. And again, we'll see the same steps. It boots, it detects the database on the SD card, again showing the cycles and effective dates with the same inputs, yes and no, whether or not we want to update the database, we will be selecting yes. And again, selecting yes, the data will be copied off the SD card. And this is all very similar to the MFD. The, the output on the screens are the same, uh, showing that the file has been copied. Uh, the PFD will then reboot just like the MFD did and verify that the data is correct and valid. Once everything is validated, just like with the MFD, the PFD will boot up as normal and you can verify that the it operationally looks correct. Once the database has been updated on the PFD, we can power off Avionics Bus 1 and power off the master. We can then remove the SD card from the PFD and return that to the protective case. We are done with the SD card. Lastly, we want to power the entire system back up to make sure everything is functioning correctly. Uh, the SD card has been stowed. Uh, so at this point, this is just a normal boot up sequence for the G1000. And again, we'll just check the splash screen to ensure that the navigation data is showing the right dates, and we should be good to go at this point. Once the system has booted up completely, um, we can then power down the system. The last thing to do is store the USB card reader and SD card back into the into the box, securing that and then storing that back in the aircraft. And that completes updating the navigation database uh, on the G1000.